I'll start with um, what Matteo brought up in, in your introduction. Um, you know, this is your first step away from documentaries, but you know, like your two previous films, it's still rooted in, in legend, specifically through this legend told by uh, these hunters. So I'm just wondering if you can maybe um, illustrate a bit more how you came to learn this story and sort of what made you ultimately decide to make it your third film, make it your third part of this trilogy that you mentioned. Uh, we were having lunch at this uh, hunting lodge where me and Alessio shot the previous two films. Um, and and the contrary of the other films, which were full of details and stuff, in this new film, we the, 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 the um, elements that the hunters gave us were none. We didn't have anything. So the more uh, we tried to pull out from them, the less we had. Uh, that's why we imagined uh, a second chapter, because what, what they told us was that this guy lived in the, in the village, uh, more or less in the 1800, uh, beginning of the 1900, and that he committed a murder, that he was a drunk, and that he was exiled in Argentina. But no, none of them had ever been to Argentina, so they didn't know anything anymore. So we researched some things and we found out that there was actually a guy with the same name who went to Buenos Aires with a ship and then probably went to Tierra del Fuego. And from there, and there on, we didn't know anything anymore. So Minalesio took a trip to Tierra del Fuego and we started researching uh, stories and local tales of this uh, island, basically. And... Um, and then we put uh, some of our imagination inside it and created the, the second chapter. Um, yeah. So um, what, uh, what made it important to you to include this sort of documentary aspect, this, this framing device really of these hunters telling this story? Why was that important for you to include that uh, in this film? Um, we wanted the film to start uh, the same way uh, we learned the story, you know, and so uh, came in from the documentary we shot before in Solingo. Um, we thought it was interesting to start the movie in the same spot, which is a small hunting lodge, um, in which people gather to tell each other stories, basically. You know, they, they gather there, they talk, they drink, and they tell stories. And um, we wanted the movie to come out of there and um, and that's why we frame you know the whole the whole thing uh, with that you know that uh, the whole thing even though then um, it explodes somehow the narration in the second chapter uh, it all comes out of a very small hunting lodge in a very small village near Rome. The, um, can I add one thing? Uh, the 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 story was very confused uh, and. Uh, so we tried to uh, portray what we also heard, the elements that we heard during a, uh, lunch that we had at the, <laughs> at, the, at the lodge where they started talking about the story. That's why it's so confused compared to the other films where actually we tried to reproduce exactly what we heard. In this case, we start from what we heard, which is a very confused story, and then we bring it on screen and abandon it. So I am curious about these two distinct parts that the film has. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, well, I'm curious when you began shooting, uh, for one, and it does feel to me when I'm watching the film again that they really, they are distinctly different stylistically. I think the, the first part of the film is uh, filled with singing. Um, I would almost at times characterize it as a musical. I don't know if you would agree, but then also the the second part of the film, you know, um, besides the location differences, just carries a different tone. So I'm just wondering if you can talk about uh, the conditions of, of shooting in these in, in Italy and then in Argentina, um, and sort of what uh, changed for you, what obstacles you faced, uh, maybe how that informed the the different styles that you took in each part. Um, we shot the um, the entire film during the pandemic, actually. Uh, thanks to uh, the wisdom, I say, of our producers, we managed to uh, put, uh, you know, the Italian shot in the middle 
of the first and second wave in September 2020, and then the second part was shot in February 2021 in Argentina. Um, we used two different crews, uh, except for from the main character, of course, and uh, the DP, Simone D'Arcangelo. And um, that, uh, you know, was uh, somehow uh, challenging for us because there were two, you know, there was dif different type of um, s the, um, difficulties we had to face, apart from the pandemic, of course. <laughs> the first part was um, all, we, we, we all shot, you know, we shot the entire thing in a very small village near Rome uh, with uh, all of the village, basically. Uh, all of the interpreters are non-actors, except from Alexandra, which is the Lovo Luciano, Alexandra Lungu, who played in uh, Le Meraviglie by Alicia Rorvacher before. She had just that experience as actress. The other one are just uh, workers, farmers from the place that we have uh, casted and with which we have rehearsed a lot. And so the you know, mobilization, I don't know if you say that in English, uh, of the entire village was uh, difficult we face, uh, even though everything went smooth. And then in the second chapter, uh, we uh, shot in a very remote place, in Tierra del Fuego, in difficult location to reach. Um, and so, you know, that phase, that put us through uh, different types of, uh, of uh, difficulties in terms of logistic, you know, production-wise, to reach the places that were far away, a lot of traveling, um, a lot of uh, uh, weather obstacles and... That's basically what uh, I think. And then, and then in terms of narration, you know, we wanted the first part to be kind of the prequel of, of a Western, as you say. You know, you always see the action part of it and you never see where the character comes from. <laughs> and that's what we wanted to do a bit, you know, with the first part, you know, you just place the character in a, you know, folk uh, tale and then throw him in a, you know, narration that explodes in the other part of the world. Uh, I, I do want to go back to the casting you mentioned. You know, a large part of it was non-professional, at least in the first part. Um, can you talk about how you found your, your lead, um, uh, Luciano, played by uh, Gabriel Asili? Uh, the, the main character is a friend of ours. He's an actor. No, he's not an actor, sorry. <laughs> he's, he's an artist. <laughs> He's an artist and uh, he's a, like a plastic artist. He's a character in Rome, um, uh, definitely not an actor. He, he never acted before. <laughs> and uh, he worked with us for a very, very long time to create this character. Uh, that long that he grew that beard. <laughs> so it took, it took him like four years probably to, to grow the beard. And... Um, <laughs> And he, he was uh, totally involved in the, in the project, although he's a person that doesn't care so much, you know, to appear in, uh, in a film or... Uh, we were friends, we went out, we, we, we had a beer and we asked him, hey, do you want to play in a film? He was like, no. <laughs> and then he, and we were like, no, nah, come on, we're, we're going to show you, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I mean, so we worked very long with him. Uh, in building the character, as long as that, uh, for example, when we finished the, the film in post-production, we kept on developing the, the, the character and we dubbed some things because he also found new ways and things that added stuff to his character, which in a sense, <clears throat> we wanted the lead character to portray, uh, it's, it's, sorry, this this town is composed by Opposites. So it's a little town uh, where there are only nobles and uh, farmers <laughs> and uh, peasants, let's say. And he was in the middle. We wanted him to be like an alien inside this in, inside the town. So um, we, we chose him because he was from Rome. So didn't belong in the town. And we took him to the town. <laughs> and he actually lived there for like a, a month or more creating that kind of like rumors around them and we utilized those rumors to <laughs> to help us <laughs> do the film so they actually saw him that way uh, they called him Luciano they didn't know his real name <laughs> uh, 
and the uh, yeah. Remarking on the, the theme of the cyclical nature of time, and if that was your yeah, intention. the circularity of yep. time. Um, well, um, the the sorry, I had I had an answer, but now I forget. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, let me think. One second. Yeah, of course it was. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a se c'è un circolo di, di una circolarità nella storia cioè inizia poi lei muore lui ritrova lui. yeah I mean we always <laughs> wanted to we basically me. wanted to tell a love story that's what we wanted to do so uh, the fact that uh, Luciano the main character goes through all the troubles in the first part in which he um, struggles to find a place you know in this town and can't and kind of spoil everything he you know, all the small things he can have, like love, for example. And then he spent the rest of his, you know, life, if you, if you want, in the second part, in these adventures, um, uh, path to realize that w what he's searching for, you know, is, you know, to find, uh, reconcile, you know, to, to find redemption somehow. And so find himself again, um, uh, in you know in the spot uh, in where supposedly there's the treasure and and you know uh, that's uh, the love he had destroyed uh, and then in terms of circularity of narration you know we you know of course there's something you know that we have talked about and we uh, uh, kind of uh, left there for people to you know feel what they want <laughs> yeah there was this uh this is not in the film, but uh, <laughs> it's one of the talks we had. Uh, Dino Campano was a poet, and he went to America, and uh, he did all kinds of things. And then people questioned if he ever went to America. So that was also an argument that we had. But yes, there is more the, the love uh, <laughs> and the redemption theme inside the film. Yeah, so the stories that are told, you know, get uh, uh, bigger and bigger from one person to the other, you know, so one tell one thing, the other one tell one thing, and so it gets so big that uh, um, it becomes like an adventurous film in the other side of the world, in the end of the world, searching for gold. And, um, and at the same time, it's such a simple thing, you know, of, of a character struggling and searching for his uh, uh, true self. I, um, I, uh, what we wanted to do is like start from an oral tale, so a story told at a table, orally, that is told orally, and then this story is it gets transmitted and it's get, it gets passed on to other people, it, it intersects other stories and it forms new stories, and each time it passes, uh, there is something different told. And at the begin, at the end, uh, it it is transported on the other side of the world, and it gets, like Alessio said, bigger and bigger. And it, in this case, it becomes becomes a legend. So that was our main intention. Uh, and it's been part of our collaboration, let's say, the, the oral tradition. Uh, I do, I want to go back. I, I touched on the music in the film a little while ago, and I would want to hear more of your thoughts on this, uh, you know, between the singing that we hear in the earlier part, but also the instrumental music that we hear throughout the film, I think just is so uh, strong and it's so powerful in the film's effect. Um, I'm just wondering how, if you can talk a, bit, a little bit of how you worked with your composer with between the, the songs that we hear early on in the film and then just uh, the score throughout. Uh, our composer is called Vittorio Giampiedro and we worked together, uh, first of all, researching like local and yeah, local uh, folk songs. And the more we researched, the more we um, came to realize that these songs are very similar uh, in all Italy. They're actually similar to many other folk songs in Europe, and in the Balkans, for example. But um, so the melody and the metric are, are always the same, but the words change from region to region. And many of these songs actually reminded us of things that we wrote and things that we heard in the film. So. We adopted uh, some film, uh, some of these songs in the text 
of these songs uh, to allow us to narrate parts of the film. And we did that also collaborating with um, Joanna Marini, which is a uh, ethnomusicologist, uh, Italian ethnomusicologist that uh, has been researching all her life, all these folk songs. And um, yeah. Question was uh, regarding the, the theme of masculinity and uh, the role of uh, social structures, or if, if that was on your mind as you were making the film. Well, yes. Um, in the previous film, you know, we uh, structure. I don't know why I'm answering you talking about the previous film, if you watched this. But <laughs> because in the previous film, there's all, you know, we um, went to this place and there was all these hunters getting around a table telling a story. And, um, uh, and so the story they were telling will describe the hermit that would leave, you know, apart from society, an outsider, let's say. And so they had such a... a like a very savage way of uh, telling the story that that's, you know, that uh, gives us the opportunity to build, uh, you know, this um, male character as opposite to his mother, his lover, you know, and that's uh, the way we tried to do it. And in this case with the Luciano, we tried, uh, you know, to focus on his um, feelings though. So even though the story is told by a group of men gathering around a fire, then you're actually seeing what, what this man is going through. Um, falling in love, not finding his place into, into this town, and, um, and then going through all sorts of uh, masculine adventures, as you say, to find out that uh, the only thing he was searching for was you know, get redemption and, and find love. And um, in that sense, I think uh, that the character of uh, Alexandra, uh, of Emma, uh, plays a big part in the film because it gives uh, the down to earth of the, of the whole thing. Uh, I don't know if I have answered your question. I, I can hear you. You're, acti you're asking about the actress uh, who was in the, the Wonders, right? Okay. She not she not only is. I mean, we um, uh, we di we did a casting for that role, and she showed up. We liked her a lot, and then we realized that she actually played in Le Meraviglie by Alicia Rovagher, a film we liked, and um, and uh, that so she had that experience, and we loved you know the way she looked, of course, because it would you know. Um, it, it would bring us back in time sometime, somehow, and gives us that uh, fairy tale uh, aspect, you know, aesthetic aspect to it that we were searching for. But also, what we loved about her was the, the strength she, bring, she brought to the character, you know. And so the way we had uh, written her character um, and got enriched. Uh, uh, rehearsing with her, talking with her, and so um, that's what you know. Uh, I think uh, uh, strike us most of uh, of her as as an interpreter and as a person also. That was more of a comment, so I'll take one more question. <laughs> uh, way in the back. Yep. <laughs> question was about the overall look and cinematography. If you can maybe comment on that. Um, uh, our cinematographer is, uh, we chose a very young cinematographer. We wanted to do a film with somebody that was similar to us, uh, who had, he, he has a lot of experience uh, with films, but in another sector. And so, and we worked really long with him. Uh, um, um, how do you say? Um, looking at pictures, paintings, uh, uh, millions of movies, and uh, and we came up with the idea that we wanted to have a um, more claustrophobic view on the first uh, part of the film, and uh, instead of a, a more open view in the second part of the film where, where there's only landscapes and 
uh, so to open the world to the, let's say America in that sense um, so big skies and um, we chose to shoot in a film mainly we also shot some things in digital because it was uh, uh, because uh, digital performs very well in darkness and, and because and in the end of the world and at the end of the world as well because there's no more laboratories <laughs> So, but but the main idea was to shoot everything in film, and uh, we liked this um, uh, painting uh, kind of painting effect that uh, it has, and you immediately recognize something that you have seen when you're a kid, which is films made on film. <laughs> and um, but there, there was a a, a big um, uh, sharing. Uh, um, process with the director of photography and not only with him it was a choral experience this film it was made uh, through the help of many many friends and girlfriends and and uh, producers and so we yeah we shared many many um, paintings in, in general images well, it, it really is a, a beautiful film. Uh, I'm glad we got to screen it in the read. Um, I'm, I'm afraid we really are um, short on time. We haven't had the screening starting in a minute. Uh, but Alessio Matteo, thank you so much uh, for coming here. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.